you have an idea, you're not sure if it's a good idea, you're not sure if the idea will even make money, there is a process that you can take, which I teach in the boot camp, that is designed to help you. Welcome to My Empower Project with your host, Erin Rowe. We will discuss nutrition, fitness, becoming your own boss, and just becoming better every day. I invite you to join My Empower Project as we embark, embrace, encompass, and enlighten. To explain how relevant it was that I met Jess, today's guest, when I did, I'm going to bring you to when I first thought of a launch. I pictured a book signing where an author read a few pages in front of 10 diehard fans, and that was their book launch. But going back a little over a year ago, Pat Flynn told us to launch our podcast, So the first thing I did was went out and I bought tablecloths. I know, wrong priorities. I thought I would rent a space and decorate it to my logo's colors and we would just throw this huge launch party. But I couldn't even get two of my friends to come over to my house on that day because their husbands were at work and nobody could watch the kids. So instead, I did a Facebook Live and I posted a couple times on social media that week. That was my launch. I didn't have a proper plan in place. The most common thing I'm asked is, what do you eat to stay fit? And early last year, I decided the best way to answer that question was to create an online course sharing what has worked for me. I was enrolled in a business course by Nicole Walters, and Jess here held a live training in Nicole's group, and I knew I needed her course. Just like following a workout plan, just like following a recipe, you need a plan to reach the results you want. And Jess came into my life at the perfect time. Jessica has managed multi-million dollar product launches for startup businesses through Fortune 500 companies. She now teaches her signature approach to launching in the Launch It Bootcamp, an online program designed to help entrepreneurs confidently launch their products and increase their profitability and impact. If you have faith, I got to tell you things are placed on your lap when you didn't even know you needed it. Jessica Brown became one of my mentors in 2018 and she knows her stuff. Hey Jess, how are you? I'm doing well, Erin. How are you? I'm good. I'm happy to have you. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Can you please tell us what you currently do as an entrepreneur? Oh my goodness. Well, I wear a lot of hats, and I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs feel that way. But basically, besides having a zillion different hats as an entrepreneur, I am a business consultant and a launch strategist, as well as a CEO of Jessica Brown and Company. And so as a CEO, that's where all the hats come on, because I'm both a marketer, and I'm a salesperson, and I'm HR, and I'm finance. <laughs> I'm all the all. But it's a wild ride, and I love being a part of it. Most recently, I took one of your courses. It was about launching a product that was a whole new concept for me. How did you gain experience and years of knowledge in that topic? Now I'm going to date myself. So many, many moons ago, over 15 years to be exact, I began my career in marketing, specifically in medical marketing. I was among those that would help launch big pharmaceutical products. So if you've ever seen one of those TV commercials where they're talking about the various different product and then they go in and give you all the fine print with all of the different possible side effects. Those type of products I helped to launch. Now I didn't do the TV shows for that or the TV commercials for those. That wasn't that wasn't my bag. But that was really what got me into launching and marketing in general. Got to see how very large corporations, as well as very large publicly traded corporations, as well as private corporations, launched products in a way in which they would be able to build up a million, a multi-million dollar, or even a billion dollar product brand. And so that's where I, I started getting my experience. But then as I started entering into entrepreneurship myself, I grew fascinated with this concept of digital marketing and what's the difference. And so I studied for years all that I could when it came to just marketing in general, especially marketing in the online world and using social media and all of that. And from there, I started actually helping some of my fellow entrepreneurs launching their products in the online space. So I was able to kind of bridge the gap between my knowledge of corporate, but then my knowledge of also 
digital marketing to try to help my fellow entrepreneurs have bigger and more successful launches. I currently work full time still in pharma and I deal with adverse events that would be on those TV shows <laughs> every day. It's ironic. And I love that you came from working with such large companies and corporate because nowadays I feel like a lot of young entrepreneurs don't have the experience on how to deal with corporate and the formalities and processes that come with it, which I feel you need that to really do things correctly when you start working on your own. Yeah, it's hard. And this is challenging because I feel like I wish I would have known what I know now when I was 20, because it is a whole nother world. There are so many possibilities for young professionals that are looking to do, let's say maybe start a side business or are looking to eventually not have to work for other people. Because let's face it, some of us aren't really good employees. Some of us are not meant to be employed. We're meant to be the boss. And there's a learning curve associated with being the boss. For many of us, especially those of the older generations, we were taught put in your time, climb the ladder, you'll get there, you'll be the boss one day. And that doesn't have to be the case anymore. However, there are things that you learn when you are working in a corporation that has over time created really good best practices that work. And if you have the opportunity to learn best practices, you can then take that and extract that and figure out how to make that apply into whatever type of business that you want to do. And there are clear best practices for certain things when it comes to customer service, sales or marketing, human resource, team building, management. And sometimes if you don't have that experience, you're you're really on a roller coaster ride of just like trying to figure it out on your own, which can be bumpy, it can be fun, it can make you want to pull out your hair, but it is possible, it's doable because people learn best practices from doing. It's just that sometimes having that corporate experience gives you a little bit of a leg up. I agree with that. For what you teach now, a launch is numerous steps that are done over a span of time. And you broke it down so well in your course, Launch It Bootcamp. What is Launch It Bootcamp? Well, first, let me define launches so that if anyone's listening in, they're like, what exactly is a launch? Well, let me help explain that. A launch, the way I define it at its most basic term, it is a marketing campaign at its finest, at its most basic concept, where you are targeting a specific group of people and asking them to do a specific action in a set period of time. Let's say the holiday seasons, a lot of folks were thinking about Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales, they're thinking about holiday sales. When you think about all those sales that were going on, then when you're seeing everyone and their mother doing the Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales, that was a launch. That was a specific targeted marketing campaign for you, the consumer, that within a certain period of time, which was around, you know, whatever their launch period, the start date and end date of their launch period, for you to buy something. And so at its most basics. That's what a launch is. And there's a lot of steps, like you said, that go into properly preparing for and executing a marketing campaign in that style, in a launch. And that's what I teach in the Launch It Bootcamp. It is an eight-week online course, and it is a mixture of both educational videos that you watch, but also there's a lot of interactive group activities with me being there in person to help you because I want to be there to, to help out. And really, in the boot camp, I teach those five steps for launch mastery. And that's really what it comes down to. If you go and start to learn any kind of skill, and launching is a skill, it takes time and it takes a process to learn a skill. So whether you're working out and you're trying to learn how to do the best burpee, or you're trying to figure out how do I meal plan correctly, or if you're trying to figure out how do I launch effectively, right? You have to learn certain steps, and those steps when you do consistently and over time, you form a mastery of that. So those steps really are five. They're five simple steps. The step number one is you create your launch plan. You, you gotta have a plan, right? There's a lot of things that go into the plan, but you gotta start with a plan. Launches are not meant for you to wing it. That's one clear way for you to launch to crickets is if you're just winging it. The second thing that you wanna do is you wanna warm up your audience. You have to know who your audience is and you have to start engaging with them so they know and trust you. Step number three is you got to activate your buyers with a pre-launch. There's some kind of activity that you're going to do that's actually going to take people that are engaging with you 
and prepping them to buy from you. And a lot of that comes with helping to to shift some beliefs or mindsets that they might have, answer their questions, giving them value that comes into that. But you're really going from, hey, just consume my content, my free content to, hey, it's time to purchase my course, right? And part of that is acknowledging that there's a journey that they're on and you're meeting them where they are in that journey and you're helping them get to that next step. And that next step can most effectively be done by purchasing your product because that's where you've really put in time and energy and you've cultivated an amazing product that is there to help them. And yes, they could try to figure it out on their own by just consuming your free content. But if they want to do it and they want to do it in a set time frame, they got to give you the money because we don't do things for free, right? Right. So then step number four really is you got to, then you got to open your sales cart. You got to have the sale time, right? Where you have a start date and end date as to when that cart is open, when that special price is, when the, the program's accessible, whatever that is, and you sell your product. And then step five is multifaceted. So that would be, you want to celebrate. Yes, you did it, right? You want to deliver because now you got to deliver what you promised. And also you want to be gathering data for your next launch because what you learn in the launch process is going to inform what you need to tweak and refine for your next set of launches. So that's what I teach. Excellent. Five must have steps. I know that it seems like, oh, that seems really simple, but there's strategies and tactics that go into each of those steps. And I, I've seen this in the marketplace and, and you'll probably even have guests talk about it on your podcast at different points in times where they'll talk about a specific type of tactic or strategy, like using webinars or doing a Facebook challenge or different things. And they're great. Those are tactics in which you're executing the strategy, the thought, the plan for your, um, for your launch or for your business and you're executing it in a certain way. And so really depending on what level of business you have, whether you're just starting out and you don't have an audience or you are further ahead and you have already warmed up and cultivated an audience and they have already been buying from you, those strategies and those tactics are going to differ. They're going to need to be adjusted based on where you are with your business. And so that's also part of what we discuss a lot in the boot camp is where are you and what do you really need to most focus on to grow your business? Because the cool thing is launches in of themselves are not only there to help you make money, <laughs> even though that's a nice benefit of launches, right? But launches is there to, in essence, help you grow your business. They're going to help you build your audience. They're going to help you establish yourself as an expert. They're going to help you get demand for your product. And ultimately, you're going to be able to grow your business as well as your reach. So launches not only help you make the money and help you get customers and then help those people out, they also grow your business. So as you are launching, Launching, your business is expanding and growing, and then you can start doing those strategies and tactics differently to be more effective. Your students, when I took the course, it was during your cycle two. Mm -hmm. Like you said, we were in various parts of entrepreneurship. Newbies entirely were in the course. And then we had people who had launched in the past, like they might have sold a digital product, but not too well. And then there were some that during our workshops were doing amazing. So this could seem like I can't do that until I have a whole sales team in an office space. But who exactly is this course for? Well, I think you accurately described it there, Erin. It really is for any coach, consultant, creative that is really looking to leverage launches to grow their business. And I personally believe everyone should. So this is for all of you all. Uh, but it's for, let's say, the brand newbie just has maybe a business idea, hasn't even built it yet. If you are someone that like would love to start your own business, you have an idea, you're not sure if it's a good idea, you're not sure if the idea will even make money, there is a process that you can take, which I teach in the bootcamp, that is designed to help you validate your product because that's one of the biggest things that we need to do is we need to make sure, hey, is your product going to be effective? Is it going to get the results that you're promising? Was your theory correct? right? We got to test it. So for those that are brand new, they don't know anything about launching. They don't know anything about marketing. This is a great course for you to figure that out. And, and these steps, these five steps actually will help you grow your business beyond just launching, even outside of launching. I designed it also for those that have maybe had a disappointing launch. Maybe you have launched before and you heard those dreaded crickets. 
And you're like, why? Why did I not get people to buy my course? And then you start feeling like a disappointment and you feel like a failure and you're like, oh, it's not meant to be. And <laughs> trust me, I've, I felt that way myself. I've had some friends that have had the dreaded cricket launch and it's never a good feeling. And there are reasons why the crickets chirp, but they don't have to. And that is, uh, I think, really it's having the right expectations and doing the right steps. And so this bootcamp really is designed also to help you understand why it happened and how you can make sure it doesn't happen again. I've designed this bootcamp to also be one for those that have had limited success. Maybe they've launched a couple of times, they at least got past the cricket stage and they're getting customers, but they're like, okay, but I'm, I'm really looking to get the five figure launch or could I get even the six figure launch or ooh, ooh, how do I get to the seven figure launch that, that is that coveted seven figure launch? What, what goes into that? They're really looking to master launching. So there's those that need to learn the basics. They don't know what they need to know. There are those that are just like, hey, I don't even know where I went wrong. And and it's messy and I need it to be nice and clean and, and less chaotic. And then those that are just looking to master it. I created this boot camp for all of them in a way where you can keep coming back to it as a resource because you don't just launch once. You're going to be launching over and over and over again. Even if you just start with one product, eventually you're going to have other products. And so, and this works well, not only for products, but it works for like an online group program. It works well for one-on-one -on -one programs. It works well, whether it's a course that you actually only have available or a program you only have available at set times, like a cycle, or it's a, a product that you might have around all the time, but you're looking to push people at certain times for enrollment. So that way you have like those seasonal sales, like stores do all the time. It works well for all of those. So I really wanted to have it be your go-to launch resource. A lot of people, I feel they wait. Like you said, they don't know if their idea is a good idea. They think, well, let me just start and then I'll worry about that. But if you don't have the steps that you taught and I didn't know I needed them until I learned them, you're just going to get stuck or there's going to be too much overwhelm. And so I really do think it's for somebody who is just starting. I really think they would get so much use out of this. You held a lot of workshops and Q&As and you offered replays. So if we couldn't make a session while like I was at work during the day, I was able to watch it in the online classroom at any time. And so I appreciate that. And also that you just said it's available for us when we need it. What benefits are provided to students in hosting those workshops? What made you decide to add that into your already step-by-step in-depth course. This really comes down to thinking about your audience, right? And this is where you really want to think about the customer experience. Who are your um, students going to be or who are your clients going to be? And what is going to best help them? So for example, if you know that your audience are going to be busy moms, then you're probably going to want to include some audio only portion of a course, like whether it is you have your regular course and you might have video, but then you have downloadable audio and you might have a transcript. Like you want to think about what is going to help your students get not only the most from your course, but also have the best experience in your course, but complete your course. So part of this is getting to know your customer. Part of it is testing it out, you know, launching it a couple of times and testing it and getting feedback. And part of it is also really putting yourself in their shoes. In cycle one, when I did it the first time, when I, when I had my very first boot camp, I taught it completely live. There was nothing that was pre-recorded and the trainings, as you know, are in depth. So we're looking at sessions that were like 90 minute sessions. And I was having Q and A on top of all that. Cause I know that oftentimes when you learn something, you don't always have the questions until you let it digest for a little bit. So I always recommend having some form of Q&A after the fact. So I had that. And what came out of my first cycle was, Jess, we love your content, but I don't have 90 minutes to watch it all. Is there a way you could break it up? And I had already intended to break it up. It's just that I realized that for the type of content I was teaching, I needed to pre-break it up. So for your cycle, I pre-recorded everything. I had it already edited out, put it live. I dripped it out. So for those of you that aren't familiar with dripping, it means that each week a new module would be available and each module had different lessons in it. So each lesson, I think 
the longest video I had was maybe around 20 to 30 minutes, but I try to keep them anywhere from five minutes to like that 20 minute time frame. I try to really keep it short and sweet. And that might mean there's 15 lessons, but <laughs> they're short lessons because I do happen to have many students that come from the corporate world that are watching this on their lunch breaks, on their commutes and after hours. I do have many of my students are also moms that either are stay at home moms or they are moms that are juggling a business full time or a job full time. And so they even have more limited time because of that. So I really wanted to make it something that my students didn't have an excuse why not to keep going? Because I think as human beings, we're used to being in our problem state. Unfortunately, when we're stuck in some capacity, we're used to being stuck. We want to be unstuck. We want to move past it, but we've gotten kind of comfortable in our stuckness, for lack of a better term. And so when you are helping your students stretch themselves to get unstuck and out of that place of where they are feeling that problem, that discomfort, that obstacle, and to get onto the other side of that, there's a whole bunch that they have to get past. There's mindset stuff. There might be physical objects. There might be mental objects that are in the way. It could be a time thing. It could be a resource thing. And your job as a teacher, as a mentor, is to help them have the resources and get out of their own way in some ways. And so one of the ways Ways that you can do that is through how you teach your course by making sure that you are keeping it short and sweet and like little bits if that's what's necessary or even doing it live because some people respond better if they're there live so for me I found also in cycle one a lot of folks had ideas but they just they weren't sure if those ideas were good enough and so they would get in their own way because they almost needed someone that could validate their idea or or say, yes, that's good enough for you to test, right? That's good enough for you to start, go start. That's where the workshops came in. And my workshops were like anywhere from 60 minutes to 90 minutes where literally it became a working session. You showed up if you could show up. We talked about your business. We talked about what you were doing. We, we fleshed it out. We said, okay, let's, let's roll up our sleeves. It's good enough. Go forth and conquer. Now is where I'm going to try to say I'm not all that in a bag of red jelly beans because I'm not all that in a bag of red <laughs> jelly beans, but I am. But no, it's like, it's not that they needed me really. They just needed a safe place to verbalize their idea and to have someone tell them you need to give yourself permission to test it. That's really what I found the power behind the workshop because a lot of my students I realized have a lot of mindset challenges when it comes to launching. There's a lot of fears and there's a lot of emotions that comes with launching. Part of pushing through that was a bit of handholding to basically say, yeah, that idea rocks, Aaron. Go forth and do it. You need to do that idea. Can you test it now? Let's get this test, like that type of thing. And um, so that's where I, I did the workshops. I think we did need you, Jess, because when our ideas are going like left and right in our head. You helped us organize. Well, did you figure out, you know, your audience? And like you said, go back to step one. And when I went through your course, I didn't want to get stuck in that safety net. So instead of saying, I'm going to watch the whole thing and come back, which would never happen. I just did the work that you said, and I didn't watch anything else until I did. I did that 10 minute video and I did what you told me to do. I wasn't like, oh yes, I'll definitely do that later. I did it then and that was huge. So you breaking it down helped. And then with the live sessions, both the Q&A and the workshops, we heard other people's ideas. So we knew we weren't alone. We knew we were all sitting behind our computers thinking the same back and forth validation things. So it helped in so many ways than just like, here's a course, I'll never see you again. <laughs> and see, that's where, you know, there's different levels of courses. You might have your little course. I, I like to call them like your intro course or let's say your low cost product. You know, there's different terms out there, right? But you might have a starter course and maybe you're not as hands on in that course, but that course is like maybe laying down some bare bone basics. But sooner or later, you know, when you're looking to really roll up your sleeves and dig in with your students and really help them get results, I think sometimes we define results as in the end result, like after they've 
mastered something. So I also suffer from imposter syndrome at time too. So like my imposter syndrome is like, well, Jess, if you're not getting everyone to a million dollar launch, I mean, like there's something wrong with you. And I'm like, yeah, but Jess, they just literally started a business. They're not going to get the million dollar launch in their first launch, right? So we have to reset our expectations for what does result mean? For me, result is, can I get you to launch? Can I get you to get past your fears, to get past that discomfort, to put something out there? Can I get you to having your first customer? I'm not going to stop with you in that first customer, but that's the first step. So part of Part of, I think, our role as, as entrepreneurs is to think about the journey our customer is having with us. It is not a one-stop shop. It is a journey. And when we create courses and programs, we need to be thinking about how can I help them on this journey? Because in essence, they have a problem. They have the end result that they want, right? Your course, your program, your signature process, which could be a series of courses, is the bridge to help them get there. Even if you split it up across different products or even if it's across different modules, the idea is how do I get them to take each step and then celebrate the step that they've taken? So Aaron, we were talking about a little bit before this, you are working on your course. I am so excited, y'all. <laughs> Y'all that are listening to this right now, you need Erin's course. It is going to be amazing. Definitely make sure that you are signing up for her waiting list, which she will have. She will announce it. She's going to tease it out because she's taken my course. She knows to do this. Yep. <laughs> you know, this is the process. Getting you to first embrace launching, that was the first step. For you to say, yeah, I can do this. That is a win. And then to have you do it, that's another win. And then for you to do it the second time and the third time and the fourth time and each time see better results as you go along, there's consecutive wins. And after you go through those consecutive wins, you're going to get that launch mastery. And then you're going to be getting those very big launches when you have the team because you've been making the money, you've been growing your business, you've been able to hire the team to manage those big launches because million dollar launches take a team. Let's just be honest. You need a team for a million dollar launch. Yes. That's what you know, you're know you looking for as a content creator, as a, a course creator, as a teacher, as a mentor, as a coach, as a consultant, is what is that journey and what are those small little wins? And those are the results that you're looking for. So you think about how do I make those micro Sometimes we think macro, but this is now you're looking at what are those micro results that I can help people have? And then how can I design my course or my program in order to help them have each of those micro wins or micro steps? And how do I celebrate those micro steps with people to keep the momentum going? Because let's be honest, if you start winning, don't you feel more motivated to keep going? Definitely. So that's what we're also trying to do as course creators and teachers. In your boot camp, not only did you teach me how to prepare for my first launch, but also how to redefine success because as a student and then for my future students, every module is a success. And it's yes. not like, if not, it'd be like waking up and being like, why didn't I lose 50 pounds since I went to sleep? Like every little thing gets you there. And so you definitely taught mindset in addition to the steps. When is your next cycle? Do you have that planned? Yes, I do technically have it planned. Is it going to shift slightly? Uh, but <laughs> it's definitely happening in around the February, March timeframe is when, when things will be happening. I think it's going to be happening definitely in February. And then the actual course, the launch, will be taking place in February and the course will definitely be taking place in March. So well, I was guilty myself of just planning to wing it like, okay, I'm going to post one post a day this week and then that's my launch or just thinking a day at a time. And I just feel that your course is so helpful for anybody in any stage if they want to help people and reach people. So where can we find and read more about your upcoming launch? You can definitely check out my website. It is Jessica C as in cat brown.com. My, my middle name is not cat and I don't own a cat. It's just, it's a, a simple way of learning or chocolate. It could be Jessica chocolate Brown, but Jessica C Brown.com. That's where you can sign up for things. That's where you can see a little bit more about me and what I do. You can also find me on Instagram and on Facebook at real Jess B as opposed to all those other fake Jess Bs. And so that's where I am. That's where I reside. 
It's been quite the journey, Erin. I'm so glad that you have gotten value. I'm glad that you realize that it's important to have a plan and not every launch is going to be the same. When you're first starting out, you don't need all the bells and whistles because you're just looking to test things. You're just looking to make sure, hey, this product is valid. Whereas when you're further along and your product has definitely been validated and you're doing good and you have students in it and you've got great testimonials and you've gotten so much data and feedback, you know how to market this product in your sleep, basically. Then you can look at all advanced strategies and bells and whistles and everything. But I think the key thing to know is with launches in general is just get out there and do it. Yes, you want to give yourself more than a week <laughs> to launch, even if you're starting out, right? You want to still follow the steps, but you can follow them in a modified way based on where your business is. So if you're literally just starting out, give yourself 30 days, give yourself some time, think through, all right, what do I want my offer to be? Who do I want to target it? What problem am I solving? What's some content that I can start putting out there? And who do I most want to take this course? And how can I get that group of people in because there's going to be a whole bunch of people that can be drawn to you, but you really want the people in your course to test it that you created the course for. And so if you're just starting out and you really only have your mom following you right now, it's okay because you know people and those people know people too. So this is where you got to talk with people, right? You got to get to know people. And sometimes it's not just going to be relying on social media. You might need to do other digital strategies or you might need to go analog where you actually go and talk to people in person. And sometimes it can be like, usually we, we create a product because of the fact that we've we've suffered from it ourselves, or a lot of people have come to us and we naturally have the skill set or we have an expertise or experience or whatever. And so we want to help them. Well, every person that has come to you and has asked you and you have given it to them for free up until this point, because you're a generous person and you just can't help yourself, you can go back to them and get them to join your first test of your product. We always know people. It's just sometimes we have to be really creative in our way in which we reach out to people and form that relationship and start engaging with folks. Whether you're starting out with literally one follower, that's your mom, or you have thousands of followers and you're looking to more effectively engage with them, it starts with putting together that plan, giving yourself time to prepare, and then making sure that you're doing all the right steps and then actually launching and selling it because you're not going to know. Like so many people I know don't launch because they're afraid to launch and it becomes this big bad monster in their head, the scary monster of, oh, all these bad things are going to happen if you try try, you're going to fail or you're going to be super successful and then you won't be able to deliver. And it just keeps growing larger and larger until you can't get past it. You psych yourself out. So don't launch. Instead, test. Don't call it a launch. Call it a test for the first couple of launches and test out your product. Get your confidence built up because you're helping people. And when you help people, you're naturally going to start feeling that passion resurge. And you're going to be like, yes, by golly gee, this is fantastic. I'm meant to do this. And then you're going to naturally want to promote it more. And you're naturally going to start marketing yourself more. And you're naturally going to get more excited about your course or your product. But you don't do that in a vacuum. So you still got to get out there. You still got to launch it. And I put that in quotation marks or AKA test it, but do so with a plan. It helped me that you had worksheets because those steps that you gave are crucial. And I think that I could do them in my head. Like what is my offer? Who is it to? But until you use your worksheets, you're going to be missing something and you're not going to feel ready. And then you can't take the action and you need to take the action. So your worksheets really helped break down each module for me. Thank you so much, Jess, for guiding me and for sharing all of your expertise with us today. It was my and pleasure. Yeah, thanks so much. I'm very grateful for this. Thank you. And for all of you listening, Erin is an amazing coach herself. I'm glad that you're here listening to her. She has so much to give. I am so proud of her. And I cannot wait to see her launches as she continues with her courses. So Erin, I'm watching. I'm watching you. <laughs> it's coming soon. Thanks so much, Jess. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Fit Nomad Course is where I will be sharing the streamlined meal prep strategy that worked for me. So I created this Fit Nomad Course to add more time back into your hectic week while adding variety to your fridge, more money in your handbag, and energy into your nightly routine. 
But before you add something else to your plate, pun intended, start with my three-day guide and see if you like it, where I prepare you to begin your health journey. And that's yours for free. Just go to erinrow.com. It'll be on the homepage there. And getting your free guide will also put you on my wait list to be the first to hear when the full Fit Nomad course is released. Thank you for listening. You can find every episode, including the written versions to read on erinrow.com. Be sure to leave a review because I love hearing your opinions on the topics I shared. Are they new? Are they helpful for you? Tap that subscribe button so you don't miss the future interviews and enlightenment to come. This episode was brought to you by me and only me because I love sharing new ideas with you. Take action to become better. Have a fabulous day.